Uh, I'm going to go straight to API ICP website and just go quickly through this API 571 and then I'll answer your question. Uh, if I couldn't, I, I didn't do that during the this webinar. Uh, so if you go to certification, uh, you can drag it down to API 577. And you can see that the exam information is there. Now uh, you can do uh, a registration first you have to do. So you have to register an account for free with API, uh, select the API 577, pay the fees, uh, provide two references. And uh, in a couple of days, they will send you uh, email authorization um, to Prometric Test Center with a link. And from there, you can uh, book your slots. Now, how this works is uh, uh, you would, you could attend it in person or you can at attend by remote proctoring. So in person, I will explain how, what happens. Uh, so once you uh, selected the slot there, you would uh, uh, try to be there at the test center 30 minutes before. You can put on your postcode or your address and uh, uh, select your favorite one, which is closest to you. You can also do it by remote proctoring from the comfort of your office or your uh, home, uh, but they would be the same security thing. So you have to show your IDs to them. If a government issued photo ID and it should be valid. Remember, it should be valid. If it's expired, they will refuse you. Uh, so you will show it to the screen if it's remote proctoring. They will ask you some security question. They will ask you to uh, show them your sleeves. You know, under your sleeve, you're not hiding anything there or um, under the, your truck. Uh, and then um, they will ask you to turn the laptop around so they know that there is nothing on the table. You're not allowed to leave the room until the exam finished and you're, you should have a video and audio as here. And uh, so they can, they're watching you when you're doing the exam. Uh, so this exam is uh, the reference documents is API 577, 2013 edition, as you can see here, the second edition, December, 2013. Um, but uh, our courses we have provided also uh, because it's cross reference to ASME Section 9, uh, welding and ASME Section 5, NDT. We have also explained that because part of that is in between this API 577. It's 150 page book. Uh, so you have to write end to end and 80 questions, three hours, 15 minutes, 195 minutes. Um, out of 80 questions, 70 are scored. Uh, 10 are not scored. They are like experimental question. They would not tell you which one they are. Um, uh, so roughly for 80 question, you got 195 minutes, which is around two and a half minutes per question. Uh, and they do a scale scoring. So practically you need 70%. And now it could be 90, 69 to 71%, but that's, that's it. So at the end of the exam, once you finish the exam, they'll send you an email. Uh, that shows whether you have passed provisionally or they call it prelim preliminary pass or preliminary fail or marginal. Marginal means too close to call. You could pass or you could fail. Um, so there is an exam tutorial. I strongly suggest that you look at it. Um, I'll just quickly go through this. During the exam, you will see the same thing. So it practically explains how things work, the buttons work. And uh, you would see the time here. Uh, the tutorial is 10 minutes or if you end it earlier. And then you would see the actual exam, the questions here, the number of questions here. And it also shows you which question you are actually attempting here, say question two, for example. And there is a next and back button. And you can start the exam by clicking on this button here. Um, and then the, using the mouse, which is the same as actually using on your laptop, uh, navigating through, so you can jump to the questions, but then for that, uh, you need to have a pen and paper if you have any question in doubt, but then you can use the flag off button. So you can, if you are in doubt about some question, you can flag it off, don't waste so, so much time. And uh, on average, you know, you got two and a half minutes per question, try to finish it like 15 minutes earlier and all those flag off questions, you can come back to them and look at them once again. 
And if there is a long question, it says this page records scrolling. So unless you don't scroll, you cannot answer the question. So they want to make sure that you have read the whole question. There is a time remaining there. It keeps ticking regardless of whether you go to toilet or uh, you're commenting or anything. The minute you start the exam, the, the time keeps ticking. So once you run out of time, um, the exam automatically stops or uh, if you press the end button, which it will be. And then if you press the end button in the exam, they will ask you whether, uh, are you sure to make sure that you have not done it by mistake and then um, uh, uh, that's it. Uh, so there is a flag off button, it will turn red once you flag it off and, uh, and then you can, at the end, you can look at the flagged off questions. So if you click on a question that you think is right, that turns color. So that means you have selected the question and you can go to the next page. Each question is one page. There's a calculator there at the bottom of your screen. And it's a simple calculator. And if you click on that, you'll see something like this. Uh, for highlighting, you just drag a click and drag. And then you can highlight if you wanna zoom in on the uh, keywords, okay? Um, and if you want to strike out, uh, you just right click and that would strike out the, that question. So you can zoom in on the possible right answers. And, and then at the end, you can also, or any time you can uh, uh, do the review all the question and then whichever you have flagged, you can filter it by flag question or attempted question and unattempted questions. And uh, so on the last 15 to 20 minutes, I recommend they look at all these flagged up questions. You can leave a feedback for each question, but remember that this is coming off your time. If you wanna challenge a question. So that's it all. Uh, and then uh, there's not, uh, <clears throat> uh, so let's go back to the course itself. Uh, let's see. Uh, what are the fees and when can you register? So if you come to this table on the schedules and fees, you see that uh, if you look for API 571, uh, 577, uh, you see that the next exam is August 13 to September 3, and the uh, deadline is June 11. So that, that deadline has passed. Uh, it's a three weeks window. So once you register and you, they ask you to select the date, for example, if you are registering for, uh, say, the next schedule, which is December 3 to 24, this three weeks window, then the deadline is October 1. And obviously, you can do it right now even. But that's the latest date that you can apply for that schedule. So once you selected the window, you have to give the exam on that window. In For any reason, if you can't find a slot, um, it's not available with Prometric or um, you could not attend it for any reason, you cannot, uh, you have to reschedule, which is as good as failing the exam. So be careful when you are, uh, as soon as you got your authorization from, you paid the fees and uh, the two references, uh, you be careful that, uh, okay, let's see the fees. Um, and uh, the pre-qualification is that any experience in the industry, if you are a, uh, you got a bachelor degree for uh, uh, technicians it's two years for a high school is three years and for no formal education you should have five years of experience so it's pretty straightforward and if you are an api 510 576 53 also you are straight away qualified for 577. Uh, so the fees is here <clears throat> is two three sixty five dollar the three fifteen dollar is for api member fee and the API does not give individual membership. They give it to the company. So your company should be an API member. Not many companies are. So you end up paying $365. For recertification after three years, you end up paying $260. Um, so every three years you have to recertify and pay $260. And you can do it three months before your um, certification expires, they will send you a remind three months, two months, and one month before your certification expires so that you can recertify yourself. Uh, first recertification, uh, the first three years, uh, you straight away get recertified, but after six years, you have to do a small quiz. It's some 20 questions, they give you 25 minutes, and they will, uh, so these are all latest revision of that what happened to API 577 during the past six years, um, the applicable one for the exam. Um, 
API, uh, and then for rescheduling, you pay $150. So that means if you could not attend the exam on that schedule or you failed the exam, you pay $150 and you're allowed four times, uh, four consecutive times. So one year or four consecutive times of exam. And if you cannot pass the exam between a year, you have to apply all over again and pay $365. If you apply late after your expiration date, the uh, up to three months after your expiration date, after three years, you can still apply, but you have to pay a late charge fee of $150. So this is about this. Now let's go back to the API itself. Um, let's see what is this API 577 is about. Um, so this is about uh, that it should demonstrate, as you can see here, that you are highly proficient and qualified in welding inspection. Now, how different is it? Uh, if you uh, look at the API 577, you can see that uh, it says welding inspection. It doesn't say welding inspector. So just remember, it's not a welding inspector. You're not a qualified welding inspector. And the uh, API 577 is more uh, operation and repair oriented rather than construction oriented like CW, C sweep or uh, CWI or CWB. Uh, so those are, the, and it says, uh, if, even if you look at the scope of API 577, it says that, uh, I'll, I'll bring it up. Uh, I'll take you to the scope. So as you can see, it's 150 page and uh, it talks about welding inspection, welding process, there are eight welding processes here. The welding procedure, WPSPQR, uh, welding materials, consumables, what is the P number, F number, A number, you should know about this. The welder qualification, WPQ, essential, non-essential parameters for each one. Non-destructive examination, you should know the overall, the, the, the fundamentals of this, VTMT, uh, PT, ETRT, -E UTLT, leak testing, hardness testing, and etc. And then there is a section for metallurgy, um, so you should know about HCC, BCC, and all that uh, structure of metals and alloys, mechanical properties, preheating, post field hardening, and etc. And hot tapping, which is uh, providing a connection while uh, the equipment is in service. Um, uh, and then uh, GMAW, gas metal arc welding, short circuiting welding process, which is um, um, is a uh, it's more restricted when you do the PQR for this. So you cannot do a, a UT in lieu of uh, RT for PQR here, uh, because UT cannot detect the, the defects for GMAW. Uh, and then there's annexes and there are uh, figures, lots of useful figures and, uh, and tables. Now, if you come here, uh, if you read the scope, you said the it is to fulfill uh, their role as API 510. This is suitable for those who are doing 510, 576, 53. And uh, it says that uh, it is not a replacement for training and experience required to be a certified building inspector like AWS, CWI, and uh, CWB, and C sweep, and PCN, and et cetera. Okay. And if you come here at the normative references, this is a cross references for this RP. So there's a, a quite a few API documents. And if you could come to ASME, you can see that they mentioned ASME section eight, construction code for pressure vessel, section nine, welding inspection. Uh, but they have not mentioned ASME section five, which I've written them an email to a standards uh, association of API. and. Uh, reminded them that, that on section eight, you are extensively using a semi section five, and we have brought in our course actually. So you should know where is it coming from. And the important thing is look, um, a semi section five is for uh, how to write an NDT procedure, a semi section nine is how to write a WPS, but the acceptance criteria is not in a semi section five for NDT or a semi section nine for welding. The acceptance criteria is always on other codes like for pressure vessel is in ASME section eight construction code or if it's a structural code is AWS D11 or it's a pipeline is API 1104. So just remember that 
this, this is a potential exam question. And then you should know about ASNT certification. What is a level two, level one, level three? What are their duties? Um, what is their um, eye test like Jager J1? And uh, we got different uh, certification scheme, ASNT, ASNT TC1A and ISO 9712 here, as you see. Uh, EN 473 is already replaced on 2012 by ISO 9712. So in 2020 edition of API 577, they have removed this. Um, but the mistake they made is they didn't mention ASME section five here, which I've reminded them and I'm waiting for their answer. So as you go through all the vocabulary, you should know what is the actual throat, what is arc blow, what is arc length, arc strike, uh, buttering, what does it mean? So these are all potential questions. We have highlighted them in our uh, uh, course materials. Now, I think I've answered, somebody asked, uh, is it equivalent to C-sweep or CWI? It is not. It's not a welding inspector course, but it's uh, but it's good actually in one sense that for uh, uh, it practically covers. There is a lot of overlap between them. I mean, if you do CWI or if you do CWB or if you do um, C sweep, uh, you still you know uh, go through those elements like the welding process, the WPS, WPQR, and uh, the the the, uh, the activities you should do before welding during welding, after welding, and so forth. And you should know little about NDT. And remember that uh, you don't need to be a welding inspector to do this job, to, do, to, to pass this exam. You don't need to be a NDT or a, uh, examiner to, do, uh, to, to be able to answer the question. You should know only the basics of NDT, where is it used? Uh, what is the limitation of them? Uh, what you should see in a NDT report or record and et cetera. So um, I'm open for question, please. Uh, uh, before that, I would like to go and show our courses. Uh, so if you come to our website, you can see that, um, and then click courses. Um, we provide uh, several courses practically on every API certification, the popular ones. And we have everything in two modes, like uh, pressure vessel, we have the mock exam package and the full course and uh, same for other courses. So if you come to API 577, we have covered everything here. And if you're comfortable with that, you can go and buy our mock exam package, which is less. So here, what you get is four hours of video, 12 sets of flashcards, 21 lessons, 600 questions. Um, and we give you four months, 24 seven access online support. You can use this, uh, our uh, WhatsApp line, or you can write to us. We got uh, by email and uh, we'll answer your question. 100% pass rate or we return your money. And I just go quickly through that. This first module is free. You can look at these first modules. Uh, the, so the basic and the person, if you want to uh, uh, see the video, you can go to the next one. Uh, so we have explained whatever I've just told you, we have explained everything here, like the body of knowledge. And, uh, and then you can keep on going. We put it in uh, video form, all, all the modules, and there is a free benchmark quiz for that as well. Uh, that it's the same environment as API, okay? So, um, so you can check your progress, you can do the next and back and then see the answer. Obviously in exam, you can see the answer and uh, you can flag it off like this and then go to the next. And also we made the video side of the body of knowledge also here for free, you can look at it, um, okay. Uh, let's see uh, if you have any question. So whatever I've explained to you, it is there in body of knowledge and the first and second module and the rest of them, we have explained the welding inspection, each module welding process, WBS PQR, welding materials, um, non-destructive examination. We have covered it with uh, flashcards and practice questions, metallurgy, 
and refinery and petrochemical and we had uh, six sets of powerpoint presentations so you if you're not a welding inspector you know the basics of welding inspection because part of these actually used here uh, about the wps pqr wpq dpx repairs visual inspection and then we have six uh, six sets of flashcards and then we have five sets of mock exam question and practice question um okay uh, let me see if there is any chat line i'll uh, i'll try to answer that i'm open for that please uh and i'll answer your chat line uh, uh okay could you please provide a comparison yes uh, as i said um c sweep or cwi they are welding inspector so they are mostly used for construction side of it and you will be if you attend that exam it would be uh you would be a qualified welding inspector when you do api 577 you are not a qualified welding inspector remember but you are known as a person who has profound knowledge in welding inspection and metallurgy and uh, in c-sweep uh, you don't need to look at the wps and pqr because uh, that is assumed to be um, the welding engineer's responsibility you only need to know that it's been approved the wps or but in uh, here uh, you, you you have to also to have some knowledge of uh, uh, welding engineering as well, uh, because you should know the parameters that they can be uh, approved. So you, you should be able to know that uh, a WPS, it would be very simple WPS. It would be one, um, either it would be shielded metal arc welding or um, gas tungsten arc welding, just one process. And it would be very simple question. Like uh, the things come like, for example, the PQR, uh, uh, can P PQR be revised? Obviously not, except for clerical errors or typos, because PQR is a set of test reports. You cannot change the test reports. Um, uh, so that sort of thing. And then a bit about uh, NDT, uh, you should know. Uh, the C-sweep is actually more uh, practical oriented and, more, and suited for construction industry. So API identified that there is a need for repair and maintenance and alteration and the person, and then obviously the, there is a bit more in, like there is a metallurgy section in um, uh, 577 where you don't find in c -sweep. Um So that's sort of, how long I have access uh, to the study material? Does it expire? Yes, it expires, but you have four months, 24 seven. So if you fail, uh, which so far we didn't have any of our candidates fail, but in case for any reason, even if it is your own fault, uh, you have two options. We renew your four months, or you can ask. You can send us your uh, fail score, and we will return your money. No question asked. Uh, so you follow our website, as you see here, inspectortraining.com, and you can see our first module. Uh, even through uh, our website is also in the LinkedIn. You, as you can see here. Uh, so inspectortraining.com, you can see these modules for free, uh, module one and module two, and you can um, also do the, our free quiz, use our free quiz. Um, so just type in inspector-training.com and that's our website. If you have any question, uh, please uh, um, use the chat line or use the meet and greet. You can always... Uh, uh, ask me question. If I am able, I will answer them. Uh, uh, so that's pretty much sums up this uh, API 577. I would suggest, even if you're not a welding inspector, you go for this because uh, firstly, you get the basic, the fundamentals of welding inspection. You know, but there are many similarities here, like, you know, welding process, you, if you do a C3 CWI course, you should know about welding process. You should know about WPS, PQR, WPQ, you should know a bit of NDT. Um, so that would be a very good foundation for you if you're planning to be a qualified welding inspector. And even if you are a welding inspector, uh, this is still, I think it's, it's a good idea to get it um, because it's looking at the welding from a different approach, like, you know, more mostly repair and alteration and that sort of thing. Um, 
Um, okay, how much uh, are you charging for the study material? What currency? It's US dollar 399 for full course, 199 for the MOOC exam package, which includes uh, all the questions and flash marks plus one hour of video uh, for free. Um, thank you guys. Uh, uh, I hope I could answer it. Uh, I might have, you know, missed something, but uh, in case, please use the meet and greet uh, or use our chat line um, here, um, as I see here, and you can text me and Mosca, and uh, we will be more than happy to help. Uh, and we will normally re uh, answer within a, a couple of uh, hours if it's daytime in UK or uh, maximum within 24 hours. Uh, thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed this uh, webinar and uh, I could answer your question properly. Uh, I would be more than happy to answer it in case. Uh, and uh, for those who could not watch, we'll uh, send the record, we'll put it up in our YouTube channel and uh, you can subscribe, you can see our other uh, videos in our YouTube channel and uh, we'll put in LinkedIn as well so you can watch it again. Thank you very much, uh, really appreciate. Uh, it was very intelligent questions. I'm frankly to tell you when I did the API 577 exam, I, I thought it's a building inspector course. <laughs> so, uh, and then later on, I found out there was not a building, although I was a building inspector for 20 years before I do the exam, but I thought it's another, you know, feather in the hat and, you know, it's good to have it. But uh, I'm happy to have it. It was very useful information there. Um, and uh, um, we hope to see you uh, with us and uh, in our next three webinars. Uh, every week we are having webinar and uh, we, we take up one topic. Thank you very much and goodbye.